What's up, MMA fans? Today we are catching up with the most important manager on this business, Mr. Ali Abdelaziz. A pleasure to meet to have you here. <laughs> it's a pleasure, my friend. And uh, it's uh, like this morning, I have so many people call me, hey, you got to talk with my friend, be nice with him. I said, of course, I'm going to be nice with him. <laughs> Verdum, Hens, all these guys uh, speak very highly of you. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Uh, first of all, let me, uh, I know about your history, but uh, to introduce you to the, to the internet viewers, uh, uh, your beginning in martial arts, you are very highly judo player. And also you got a black belt from Hansel Gracie. You fought MMA. Just give, you, give us an idea about your career in mixed martial, in martial arts in general. Yeah, I you know I, I start do judo when I'm five years old and uh, and uh, you know I can I, you know become a national champion and I, I compete for the national team. I come to the U.S. and uh, and uh, you know and I start I competed here too. And after that, you know I start I stayed here and uh, I beginning training uh, with Master Henzo. Uh, now for almost 16 years, uh, maybe 17 years. And uh, being a student of Mr. Hinzo, and uh, without him, I would not even exist. Uh, this man did a lot for me. You know, him and the uh, Gracie family, Igor Gracie, Hollis Gracie, Gregor, uh, my friend Rafael Natal, many, many Brazilian friends uh, in, uh, in the United States. And uh, I'm almost half Brazilian. <laughs> Very nice. And, and how you got in, in, in Vale Tudo? You fought Kauruno, you fought. Uh... Couple of guys in, in Vale Tudo times. Yeah, I was you know I was you know I was I was doing judo at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Spring and I started training in MMA and I have some couple of fights. I wasn't the best fighter in the world and but I really loved that martial art. You know, I always wanted to compete and uh, and I have an opportunity uh, and actually I was training out of Hinzo Gracie for this fight. You know, and I just moved there uh, a couple of years ago before the fight and I trained there for the fight and I represented the gym. It didn't go my way, but I have the pleasure to compete uh, such a legend like Karo Uno in K1 in Japan. And that was my last fight. And after that, Mr. Hinzo said, listen, you have to work with me. And I started helping with the gym, helping the boys, uh, Igor, Gregor, Hollis, Rafael Natal, David Branch, all those guys in the gym. And after that, just uh, Hinzo said, hey, I want you to become my manager. And I said, hey, you crazy? How I become your manager? You're like a legend. And in reality, he won to help me start a career, right? And want to give me credibility. And that's how I become a manager. I started managing Hinzo Gracie. And after they introduced me to Frankie Edgar, I started managing Frankie. And, uh, and uh, the rest is history. Very nice. I didn't know you. You started with Hanzo. So yeah. that's how you start to be the number one manager. It's a long way from, from which year do you start managing Hanzo? Um, to be honest, I started helping the boys in the gym uh, since 2006. Just helping out, just small shows, not making money, just this my friend. And after that, when Hanzo wanted to fight Matt Hughes in 2009, he said, I want to go meet to the UFC. And I said, I don't know anybody. I didn't know anything about Joe Silva, Dana White, Lorenzo Fatita. And I reached out to Joe Silva. And Joe Silva says, above my big rate, you have to talk to the Lorenzo and Dana. And back then, my English wasn't even good, like, like I have a heavy accent. And these guys opened the door for me with hands on. Uh, I think everything was set through Sheikh Tahrun already. And these guys just want to be nice to me and uh, have a meeting with them. And, uh, and, and honestly, the rest is history. And since then, you know, then I've been a huge part of, uh, of my life as a, as a mentor and as a friend, as a big brother to me. And I know promoter and manager, supposed to have this amazing beef, but I, I tr truly respect him. And I remember the way he met me when I was zero. And the, him and Lorenzo, they treat me so well. I'm still in touch with Lorenzo too. He's a great man and, uh, and Dana's a great man. And, uh, and, and I feel, you know, these guys very much gave me an opportunity. I still, you know, sometimes we have to fight for my fighters, but in reality, um, we all one big family who work with each other to help the sport and help the fighter to become uh, you know, bigger sport. And sometimes I don't understand why a fighter need to fight with the promotion. And sometimes, you know, little stuff can go fixed behind closed door, you know? 
but this is how I started really, and and I work with many many Brazilian legends, like uh, not only Hanzo. One of my favorite Brazilian legends is my brother Fabrício Verdun Alcavalo. Uh, he gave me an opportunity, like same as Master Hanzo, uh, and we you know he won the interim title, we won the championship title, and now he's in PFL. Uh, he's a big brother to me. He's one of the best human being I ever met in my life. Fabrício Verdun is a really great man, you know. For two, yeah, that's that's absolutely true. I, I agree with you. And uh, talking, let's start uh, talking about him. Uh, how Ali, you know him as a manager and as a person. How do you see this future? Do you think he's going to stop and fighting boxing to finish the career, or do you see a light in the final, in the end of the tunnel that like he's fighting MMA again in in a near future? Listen, we saw Hanzo fought at 50 years old, right? Uh, listen, I think the guys like Hanzo or Fabricio, you know, they choose their own legacy. You know, they can do whatever they want. Nobody, well, who I am to tell them what to do? Fabricio is a fighter at heart. And uh, of course, I don't want these guys to fight, you know, but if if they want to fight, of course, they can choose to. And I'll be there by their side, supporting them 100%. Talking about Brazilian legends, uh, I, I talked to André Pedernera's, like, two or three weeks ago and he said that there's a high probability that Jose Aldo returned fighting and he said Hudo, which is your fighter uh can you talk about that is is it possible? against my fighter and he said Hudo is not a fighter who's this and he said Hudo and he said Hudo say Hudo uh yeah listen Andre Penanaris is a living legend man I think uh uh, you know, without him, MMA in Brazil would not be the same. He did so much for Brazilian, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 community, and I respect him. Of course, Jose Aldo is a legend too. I respect him a lot. Listen, at the end of the day, Hanzo Hodo is going to come back and fight for the title. Whoever have the belt, uh, uh, you know, um, Henry going to fight. And I know Henry always want to fight Jose Aldo. And I think it is going to be a very big fight, Henry Sohudo and Jose Aldo. And I would love to see these guys both fight. They both the best of the best, you know, um, the best of the best. And uh, and if Andre Penares wants this fight, I'm sure we can make it happen if the UFC want to make it happen. But Henry's focus first, come back, fight for the title, win the title. And I have no problem at all, uh, Jose Aldo, to defend the title against Henry Sohudo, 100%. Uh, how long do you think Cejudo will be ready to fight again in the UFC? Because there, there's all uh, the, the, the Osada bureaucracy he, and everything. He already passed the Osada test. Uh, I think end of the year, I think November, December, we will see Henry Cejudo back in the octagon. Very nice, very nice. Talking about the UFC 275, have you seen uh, Verdun and Prohaska? How, how did you like that fight, Prohaska and Verdun? Oh, I'm sorry, Glover Teixeira and Prohaska. I think nine times out of ten, if Glover fight Prohaska, Glover beat him. I think Glover dominate this fight from, you know, he have all position. He mounted him. Uh, he could have finished him. You know, he jumped for this guillotine and he was hurting him on the, on the feet. I think uh, if they fight ten times, nine, uh, uh, Glover will win nine. I think Glover is a... Is a a legend, I respect him a lot. Such an amazing human being. And I think this guy got lucky a little bit, to be honest with you. That's what I think. And you got Tankalaev in that division, fight, fight, fighting, fight, fighting Anthony Smith in the sequence. Uh, if he wins, probably he will be fighting Prohaska. Uh, how Listen, do you I, uh, actually, I text the McManor after this fight. And I said, if honestly the UFC make a rematch, I, I'll be okay with it because I think it was a, such a great fight. And, I, I, you know, Glover was winning. He just got caught with the choke at the end, right? And I think, you know, not taking any credit from any guys, but that was a great fight. And when you have a great fight, when you do rematches, you know, Magomed Ankalaev, he can win his next fight against Anthony Smith. And he can be the number one contender. And if these guys want to fight now, they can go ahead and fight now. There's no problem for me. Do you think it's fair, Glover, to have uh, immediately uh, rematch? Yes, I, I think uh, you, you cannot den deny Glover. He's 42 years old. But the question is, if Glover win the title, 
he is going to stay or he's going to retire? That's the question. And this is the UFC have to figure out. But I think Glover should, if he, they give him a re, immediate rematch, 100%, I'm okay with that. Very nice. Uh, talking about Kamaru Usman, the last interview I saw, you were talking about his hand injury. And, and last week I saw he recovered and he will face... Uh, in Weatherdon, UFC 278, August 20, in South Lake City. Uh, is that? Can you confirm that? Kamaro Osman is almost half Brazilian. You know, his daughter is Brazilian, half his mother's Brazilian, and he has a big connection with Brazil. Yeah, he's, he's fighting August 20th, uh, you know, uh, versus uh, Leon Edward. And one of the things I said today on Twitter, and people went crazy, I believe Kamaro Osman will be... Jan Blakowicz, Glover, and uh, and Yeri. I believe Kamaru can beat these guys. I, I really, true. I know it's gonna sound crazy, you know. I, I don't want to see him fight Glover because I like Glover too much. But I believe he beat all these other guys right now. He's he's the pound for pound best fighter in the world today, and I think uh, uh, he can be a champion at light heavyweight right now. Yes. Do you think uh, you you we will see him soon against Shimaev? Uh, I know you have a great connection with the Russians. He's not a your, your athlete. But uh, how do you see Shimaev and, and Usman facing each other? Listen, so I, I think Kamaru will fight anybody. It doesn't matter. It's going to be Shimaev. It's going to be Gilbert. It's going to be Kobe. It's going to be whatever. You know, he's the best. When you're the best, you have to fight anybody. It doesn't matter if I have connection, I have not connection. Listen, Gilbert Brin is my brother. And he's one of the best Brazilian fighters right now. We fought Kamaru. I stayed mutual between both of them as brothers, and I stayed in the middle. And um, they fought, and the best man won. And when Gilbert lost, I went to see him first, and I went saw Kamaru. Um, is at the end of the day, we in the sport for the best to fight the best, right? Uh, but one of the things I want to say about Brazil: Brazil is the equilibrium of MMA. This is the birth of uh, of MMA. And I know at one point, all the champion moved to the U.S. to Russia. But slowly, maturely, I'm seeing Brazil rising again. You know, Taylor Santos, I believe she beat Valentina Shevchenko. I really, truly believe, you know, she, she won this fight. You know, you have a girl like Jessica Andrade. I think Jessica Andrade can be a champion at 115. And you got this new girl, Karina Silva. This girl, she's a savage. She's unbelievable. I think she, with the right moves, the right decision, she, she can fight for the title soon, you know. And, of course, you got Figueroa, you know. My opinion, he's one of my favorite fighters. I think Figueroa is such an entertainer inside the cage, outside the cage. The guy who, you know, he, he carry power like a heavyweight, you know. He have great jiu-jitsu, and I really, really uh, like his style a lot. Uh, and I think we don't appreciate him enough, you know, as a champion. Um you know, and of course, I managed many, many Brazilian fighters like uh, uh, Ariane, Ariane, Arujo, Vivi Arujo, Ariane. Vivi Araújo, great fighter, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, Bruno Silva, Claudio Gadelia, Herbert Byrne, Rafael Alves, Gilbert Byrne, Vesanti Luco, my brother Rodolfo Vieira, uh, Bouchesha. And we see Bouchesha and one FC smashing everybody. I believe it's going to be by next year, he's going to be one FC champion. Uh, Felipe Pena turned into MMA. Uh, Felipe Lins, former. Felipe uh, Pena uh, is, is your athlete too. Yeah, Felipe Pena is my athlete, and my brother Nitan Show. You know, he's one of the best human beings you meet in this game, and he's very, very good. And he's been robbed last two fights in his fight, and of course, with Neyman Gracie. This is guy I know him when we used to eat ice cream for dinner. We didn't have too much money. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, Zaffarino, Gleason Tibau, uh, Antonio Carlos Jr. of Verdun. And I have to stop on, and of course, Ronnie Marks, who helped me with a lot of Brazilian athletes in Brazil, like managing him. And one of the guys I believe is one of the best, biggest Brazilian superstar today, but he's not in the UFC, Bruno Capaloza. You know, mm -hmm. I think Bruno Capaloza is one of the most underrated fighters in the world. I think this guy's it's so good and I don't because he does not fight in the UFC we don't talk him about him enough 
I think is one of the best heavyweight in the world. Maybe top two, top three. This is my opinion. You you said something that called my attention. You said Marcos Buchecha next by next year. Do you think he will be in the UFC? Uh, one know, FC, one FC. Ah, one FC of ah, okay. He's yeah, already he, he will be one FC champion. I he believe this. You know, he's in good setup. He's uh, you know, Shatri and all those guys in one FC. They're doing a great job with him. They 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 groom him. They groom him slowly. They make him grow. They're not throwing him in the fire. And I think um, they respect the martial arts so much. This is why they understand this. And I think by end of next year, Marcos Buchecha will be uh, uh, the UFC, uh, the one FC champion. I keep saying UFC because they're all the same, <laughs> but one FC champion, and uh, I can't wait for to see that. And I would like to be witness that life. Hopefully. Uh, you, you talk about uh, Gilbert Burns, also Durinho. Durinho is a guy that learned a lot to use the social media to call fights. It's, I got really amazed. I, I know Durinho since the purple belt. It's really nice how this guy evolved, not only as a fighter, but also as a to understand the sport in general. And he used a lot the Twitter. He got fights. He helps your job a lot with the Twitter. And he's calling now Jorge, Jorge Masvidal. Do you, do you think this fight will happen? Can yes, you tell I, about I, I, I have a meeting with the UFC on Wednesday, and we're going to talk about this. I think the UFC interested, Gilbert interested, Masvidal interested. And I think, you know, a Gilbert, after last performance, you know, he deserved a big fight. And I think that's a big fight. Or hey, Masvidal is a big star, you know, this is no doubt. But, I, you know, I think, um, I think, I think Gilbert going to smash him. I think uh, Brazilian power is real. I think uh, he, everybody say, Polo's power, Gilbert Byrne have Brazilian power. Um, this man hit like a truck. He have a heart of a lion. He move like a cheetah. Uh, and I can't wait for my brother uh, to fight uh, and win again and get closer to the title and fight for the title. Uh, we are talking back here about Kamaru Usman. Uh, you're talking about numbers. You're, he's already the number one pound for pound. But when we talk about greatest of all times in, in 77 kilos in the welterweight division, do you think he already is above George St. Pierre? What is your opinion? It's not even close. You know, I, I, George is my friend. I love George. But it's not even close. Uh, Camaro never lost in the UFC. He's been undefeated for so long. Um, uh, he's on a 17 fight winning streak in the UFC. I don't think George ever had that. And I think the competition who, who fought, you know, Kobe Covington, Maz Vidal, Leon Edward, Gilbert Burns, the list go on and on and on. He beat all of them, you know. Uh, I, I believe he's the best welterweight of all the time. I, in my opinion, he's, he's, he's the GOAT. He's, you know, him and Khabib neck to neck. They're the best of the best, you know. Uh, and uh, I forgot about talk about one guy, and he's one of my best friends, Marlon Marais, you know. Marlon. Uh, I, I want to tell Brazilian people, it, this man in the USA is one of the best human beings you ever meet. And this man, nobody represents Brazil better than him, you know. He's, he's a... No, no, everybody loves Marlon. You cannot meet anybody love Marlon. And, uh, and uh, this is the way a man should act. And, uh, and I love this man dearly. Uh, and he's a good man. Nice, nice. And, and talking about Brazil, you're talking about Brazil. You have many Brazilian fans. Have you ever came here? Did you ever brought summer for fighters to fight in Brazil? Now, uh, I went to Brazil due to competition a long time ago like in, when I was a junior, but I haven't been to Brazil since, you know, but, you know, like I said, uh, I love Brazil. I grew up with the Hands of Gracie gym for 10 years and everybody around me is Brazilian, you know, and, I, and I, I know the Brazilian food. I know the Brazilian culture. I love the Brazilian people. Where I come from, people are very passionate and Brazilian people are such a beautiful people, you know, doesn't matter from, from Rio, from the favela, from, from, from anywhere. They, uh, they just a good, good-hearted people, very passionate people. And I'm telling you, Brazilian MMA right now is on the rise. Like, you see Tala, Tala Santos fight Valentina, you know? I, do you think I she won? Valentina. Do you think, she's, do you think I she won? Val I love Valentina. 
But I think Salah Santos won. And many people think so too, you know. I think women MMA in Brazil, it's it's very it's the strongest than any other country. This is my opinion. And I think it was such an impressive to see this girl like uh, do this such a work. She, she's amazing, man. And I think the headbutt have a lot to do with it. And I think the UFC should make a rematch. You know, this is rematch should happen. You know, this rematch should happen. I think it's a it's a great matchup. And then I told everybody before the fight. She punched her hard. She finished everybody. And nobody believed him. Now, if you don't know, now you know. Dana sometimes know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about Dana, he just said that Charles Oliveira will return in October in UFC 281 in Abu Dhabi or November 282, probably in New York. Uh, the only two fights that would make sense to him are your fighters, Islam Akashev or Benil Dariush. Can you tell us which one uh, will get uh, will get the title shot? Um, you know, you know, I, I like Charles Oliveira. I like Makako. I, I like Makako is like a, a, a great man, you know. But I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter who's gonna fight Charles Oliveira. And I'm sorry, Brazil. I love you, but Charles Oliveira is not gonna be the champion in October. You know, he's gonna lose. You know, you know. I think. Uh, he have not fought the grappler like Islam or Benil, you know, even wrestling. They're better than him in wrestling. They're better than him in grappling, you know. But also, Charles Oliveira become a very clever fighter too, you know. But I, I just don't see it. He can beat any of these guys. And I respect him. I'm not talking trash because he's a good man. You know, he's a good man. He beat Justin Gage. He's one of my guys. He did a great job. And I congratulate him. And I said, you know, they should have given him his title back because, I, you know, this whole skill thing was crazy. Uh, and I don't know, I have not got confirmation. Uh, or if even if I know, I want to be honest, the UFC dropped the announced fight. It's not my job, you know. And uh, and it's going to be one of my guys, Benil Islam, either, either of them. I'm not choosing anyone above the others, you know. But, you know, uh, whatever who's going to fight Charles Oliveira next, any of my guys, they're going to beat him. But for sure, it's not going to be Islam against uh, Makashev. That's for sure now. This is, listen, I, I don't make this decision. Like like this, I always say this. If I don't have contracts signed, nobody know nothing, right? Listen, Charles Oliveira fought Benil, signed the contract. A week later, said he's not fighting. Benil fought on, he fought on, he became the champion. Benil's not the champion. This is why sometimes even you sign a contract and you don't know if this fight is going to happen or not. And uh, let's see what's going to happen. I think, listen, that's the best, you know, Benil have seven fight winning streak. Islam have 10 fight winning streak. Charles Oliver have 11. The best to fight the best in the UFC, right? Conor McGregor is not going to come fight for the title. Mike Chandler is not going to fight for the title. It's going to be Benil or Islam. Islam. <clears throat> Uh, you said uh, you said back. Uh, back I saw an interview you where you said that uh, uh, you believe uh, Makashev would would beat uh, Charles in probably in first round. But imagine that the opposite. I didn't happened. say the first round. I said under three round. Yeah, under three round. Okay, but I think imagine, he was submit, I thought he would submit him under three rounds. Under three rounds, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and imagine if Charles submits Makashev. Do you believe in that case you could convince Khabib Nurmagomedov to come back to MMA? What do you think? I listen. You never know. You know. I never say no. Never. But in a way, like look at Khabib. You know, twenty-nine and oh, never lost a round. You know, Charles Oliveira almost have ten losses on his record. You know, what Khabib have to prove to be Charles Oliveira? Charles Oliveira, as great as he is, he can never touch what Habib have accomplished, you know, because it's a different legacy, not only inside the cage, outside the cage too, you know. Habib touched billion, almost two billion people, you know. That's who Habib followed. Not include American people, not include Brazilian people. And listen, you believe it or not, I know Habib sometimes joke about um, if Sambo is easy, you call Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, Habib really enjoyed, he told me one of his best experiences he ever experienced fighting in Brazil. He loved Brazil. 
you know he and, and he actually was saying if islam get the title shot we need to ask the ufc to have this fight in brazil right but i don't know what the ufc is going to do but i'm very sure very soon we will know um uh, uh what's going on you know listen but I, like i said brazil is on the rise right now and everybody who ignored na corona i think hurt brazil MMA. but i think everything open i think now we're going to see brazilian and may come back yeah and be sure brazil love uh khabib a lot too you know because khabib even he talking uh, we know that uh this small trash talk is part of the game but he's pretty much respectful and uh, and brazilian people know he started here i, I when i did I, when i i was launching this book here by the 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 day i launched this book he went to the lounge ceremony in Sao Paulo when he fought uh, Thiago Tavares. I couldn't believe he, he was a true beginner and then he was in the line to get the signature from me and Susumu Nagao. And, you know, this guy made all his career uh, doing great fights and respect <laughs> the opponent. And he beat McGregor and Brazilian people <laughs> don't like McGregor too much. So he, Brazilian people like Khabib, be sure if he come here, he will be very well treated there. Yeah, yeah. You know, fighting you know, shot Brazil. No, but Brazil is the mother of MMA. You know, without, without, without Brazil, the Gracie family, without like uh, Andre Pananaris, uh, Parumpa, Conan, Many, many Brazilian coaches come to the U.S., you know, and make a big difference, too. Henzo Gracie, uh, many, like Henzo Gracie come here in 1995, 1996, and opened the academy in New York, and people doesn't even know what jiu-jitsu is, you know. Like, you see Conan and Parompa go to ATT or Katal, they go to ATT and start a dynasty with Dan Lambert, you know. Uh, and uh, Macajon, too, many, many brazilian coaches come here and make big difference in uh, in mma you know you know you have uh, the, the 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 pound for pound legend rafael cordero you know rafael cordero moved to california and changed the landscape of all mma i don't believe that the mma in california or this west coast will be the same as out rafael cordero my opinion he's one of the greatest mma coaches of all the time you know, and I've also had many other coaches too, you know, but guys like him, like Hanzo, like uh, Dan Lambert, like Kono, like uh, Parumpa, like many of these guys, they make a huge difference. You know, Ricardo Almeida, uh, many, I, I know I'm going to forget some people name, please forgive me. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's just many Brazilian coaches have moved to America and this is the reason American and maybe the UFC become as big as it is because Brazil. Uh, Ali, uh, talking about, we are talking about uh, Khabib and, and the name of McGregor came. Everybody knows you and McGregor don't get along very much. And uh, how do you see uh, the news that may he, he, he may return fighting Michael Chandler? Do, do you think it's a, it's a fair fight for him? Is a good fight for him? I don't care about it. Like this, like, uh, this McGregor guy is like, uh, he's very... <clears throat> He disrespect the nation. He disrespect the people. He want everything for attention. He he prostitute. You know, he's like a prostitute. He always talk about people. I remember how he treat Aldo. You know, that was for me. I respect Aldo so much. Even he beat Frankie Edgar two times, and he's one of my brothers too. You know, but I respect him so much. And and he, I believe McGregor respect disrespect the Brazilian people. And I think this guy all care about just uh, himself. And I don't like to talk about this guy too much. And Mike Chandler, I don't care about this guy too. He's two and two in the UFC. You know, he's Charles the Bronx Oliveira, make him go sleep. You know, uh, who else make him go sleep? Uh, Justin Gishi, uh, uh, beat him up, you know. Yeah. And I just think uh, at the moment, you know, this is maybe money fights, but I'm talking about Brazilian people care about legacy, about championship, about bill. And that's what I care about the most too. Of course, we all have to make money. But if they fight, of course, anything McGregor does is people tune in because he have like a fake army, you know, not a real army. And Mike Chandler too is this guy in Bellator. He never talk. Now he talk because he watch a couple WWE film and he act like the Undertaker or something. You know, it's all fake. It's not real. You know, you know the real is Habib, Justin Gaethje, Kamar Usman. 
Gilbert Byrne, Hansel Gracie. These are real gangsters, you know. But these guys, like, they want to be gangsters, but it's a little bit fake, like fake style. You know, it's not real. You know, Vardum, you know, Vardum. You know, this is one of the real gangsters in the metro, you know. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, you, you always say that Khabib, I saw an interview, you and Henry Serrud and Mike Tyson, you were explaining why you believe uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov is the coach. I, I, I believe you have numbers to prove that. But why you believe he's above John Jones? Man, John Jones, you know, like when I talk about the good, the good mean inside the cage, outside the cage, you know? Outside the cage, outside the cage, you know. Habib never have close fight. You look at John Jones. Last three fights is very close fights. You know, last uh, last last three fights is very close fight. Habib never had even a close fight. You know, dominance. Habib is better. Undefeated in many rounds. Habib is better. Outside the cage, Habib is better. Habib never have any action with Rosada. Uh, none of the stuff. You know, I'm not saying. Of course, John Jones is a great fighter, but he cannot tie the shoes of Habib. I don't think he can. He's great, good, but I think Habib on a different level. You know, he's loved by many. You know, you know. I don't think John Jones is a bad person, but I just don't think all his career he doesn't have the right set, the right people who take care of him, right? Who turn him wrong from right? He was a young guy. If you give me what John Jones have at 21. I probably walk naked in the street because I know myself. I'm wild, but you know I don't blame him. But I think Habib is just the way he brought up was different, you know. And I met John Jones' parents; they're very nice people. Just I'm not just it's just different mindset, you know. Just Habib is Habib, you know. You know, is the reason why Habib have 35 million followers on Instagram. John Jones maybe have five, you know. Uh, it, it's just uh, Habib changed people' life. How many? life John Jones had changed, you know? I don't know, you know? You know? Also, we have a lot of great fighters like Anderson Silva, like many, many fighters, Vitor Belfort, like many, many fighters, they're great fighters, but this level Habib has done right now, and I'm telling you, Kamaru's there too, I, and I'm not just saying about Kamaru, you know? You can say Verdum, he won ADCC champion, uh, 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 BGJ with a Gi World Championship, UFC Championship, Antrim Bell. Many people you can say, you know, they they the goats, you know. George St. Pierre, what a great human being, you know. How you cannot say is the goat, you know. This is my opinion. Everybody's different. I can be wrong, you know, but I'm not taking anything away from John Jones. But I don't think he is. I think I can put George St. Pierre before him. Uh, I know you're a very close friend of Habib. You, you are partners in Eagle FC too. Uh, and just as curiosity, uh, he, he keeps training, having sparring because he's such a tough guy. I, I, I don't, I don't, I can't imagine Habib stopping training. How, how is doing? He, is he keep training the daily routine? I'm gonna say something, and I know I'm gonna. A lot of people are gonna talk bad. And I know me and Israel Alassani have like a little beef, but you know, I have no problem with Israel. I think he's a good man. Habib now weighs 200 pounds. If Habib come tomorrow and cut to 185, he will stop Israel Alassani on three rounds. This is my opinion. I see it. I see it. He beat heavyweight, light heavyweight, welterweight, lightweight. He's unstoppable now. He's like a tractor trailer, you know. But the styles, if Habib wants to come back and talk with Dana White, said, let me fight at middleweight. He will finish Israel in three rounds because the style of fight. You know, because Habib cannot stop his wrestling. He cannot stop his grappling, uh, you know, uh, Israel. But striking, of course, Israel is the best striker on this planet, my opinion, you know. But he can come back and fight middleweight and become a champion today. He's in always in good shape. He's always in good spirit. And you never know. Honestly, he said, I'm never going to fight again. But sometimes I feel like he won. <laughs> Because I say, hey, why you go so hard with the guys? He said, oh, I have to show him who's the boss. But in reality, you know, you never know what happened. I think Dana White is enough clever to, you know, maybe he would do the ultimate fighter with Tony Ferguson, right? And they go crazy with each other and they end up fighting at the end of the season, right? Uh, you never know. 
Do, do, do you believe his mother would accept, would change her mind? Uh, or, or is much more like uh, about is much more about Khabib's decision? I don't know, man. Habib is a very special guy, and, and we us are Muslims. We have to follow mother, what mother said. You know, we cannot go to enter paradise without what mother happy with us. You know, that's the beauty of Islam, you know. You have to respect your mother, you have to respect your father. Your mother before your father, actually. You know? And this is we, this is our culture, our religion. And Habib is always have great communication with his family. And whatever his mom says, is gonna, she's the boss. For sure. Yeah, I understand, I understand. Uh, also, I, I want uh, you to talk about your relation with uh, Dana White. He's a very respected man, the most powerful man in MMA. And you are the guy who deal best with him as, as a manager. Would you give uh, uh, advice for some new managers? Like, don't do that with the man. I already saw some interviews that you give very nice tips about that. Like, don't talk publicly uh, what you discuss with Dana or things like that. Like, I, I think is people can say whatever they want, you know, like. I think it's a respect thing, right? And um, like, uh, to be honest, I think Dana White is a good, he's a very simple man, you know, just don't lie to him, don't bullshit him. You know, all the UFC, like Mick, Sean, Hunter, all these guys, they simple people, just be straight, you know? And sometimes, hey, they, they smash me, they argue with me, but all the time I don't take personal because it's never about me, it's about the athletes, you know? And I think Dana, as, as a man of his word, that the man never lied to me, he never said nothing about, about bad about me. I, he, he, he's just, a, he's a good man. He's, he's always, he does so much stuff for fighters without even people knowing. Spend probably millions of dollars a year helping other people out. He doesn't really have to, you know? And everybody wants to criticize. Fighter pay. Okay, if you don't like the UFC, don't go fight, sign with the UFC. If you have Bellator, you have PFL, you have one UFC, go sign them. Why the time, all the time? I feel like everybody, when they go to Dana, everything is good. They have beef with Dana, they're going to start talking about, look, Figueroa situation, you know? You know, this guy is one of the most respected champions in the UFC, right? If you want more money, okay, no problem. Go set up a meeting, sit with Mick, sit with whatever you're going to sit with. Hunter, whatever you're gonna sit with, and make a deal. Real men do deal behind closed door, you know, you know, and it's all about relationship, you know. Like, 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 like people's like a lot of people say, oh, Sean is very grumpy, blah blah blah. No, I don't think Sean's grumpy. Sean is real. He, and I think out of all of them, he's the most generous. <laughs> and, but you have to be real with him, you know. And I better to be straight with me and mean to me than lie to me, you know? But I feel, you know, Dana's, Dana's without him, the sport wouldn't be here. Let's not get it for ourselves. And if you have beef with Dana, go directly to him. He will talk with you. Don't go on the internet and type stuff. For what? For what? You know, I Makes think sense. it hurts you. It doesn't help you. And I think grown people does business behind closed door, you know? And I, and I think Dana is very easy to deal with. I, I don't have no problem with nobody. If I have a problem with somebody, you guys will never know about it because I never can talk about it. Because at the end of the day, if I work 18 years in my life, good with these guys. And one day bad, I'm going to run and complain. This is not good, you know. And, and, and I think, like I said before, you know, we all have to be grateful for Dana White, for, for Scott Coker, for 1FC, for... for PFL for everybody, you know, why would not be grateful? Because these people prefer to buy them money for a family. Of course, we always want more money and they want to give less money, but it's always, we can meet at a place when everybody's happy, right? You know, I ask money for these guys all the time, but I ask in a way, I don't ruin a relationship. And it's no like some reporter they, they talk about this, they talk about this, they talk about this, hey, who's out? And after that, when the UFC gave you a meal, you're in the back eating chicken. Or they let you in the back, you're doing this. If you're against the UFC, why even you go cover the UFC? Don't cover the UFC. 
This is my opinion. And I think everybody who have beef with the UFC handle behind closed door or any promoter. That's my opinion. Uh, also, I want to, to finish talking with you about Ego FC. Uh, you, please tell us your plans about Ego FC. Uh, you have Cigano fighting, you have other Brazilian fighting. Uh, do you have any plans to come to Brazil or to go other states than, than Florida? First, Cigano, like um, I recently started helping uh, Cigano. And I'm going to tell you something. Every time I speak with this man, it's like I feel like the world has no problem. You know, he's, he's one of the most positive people you can ever meet. And he's such a beautiful person, have a beautiful family, beautiful children. And, uh, and uh, I really like him and I respect him a lot. You know, uh, about Eagle Man, listen, I'm not the boss. I'm just helping out sometimes. You know, you got to talk with Habib about this uh, and Rizvan. And of course, uh, you know, uh, Eagle is a global brand. They're going to be everywhere worldwide. You just have to make sense, you know. Uh, and, uh, and I just, uh, Eagle is grown little by little, you know, just uh, not try to compete with anybody. Just try to give other people opportunity and grow a little bit. That's what Eagle doing. Was a Thanks a lot for the interview. I, I want to say something. You know, I, <laughs> uh, you know why Brazil is safe right now? Because you have the president of Brazil love MMA and love Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> and I know uh, some people maybe like him, he don't like him. I'm such a huge fan of the Brazilian president. And I know he's close from hands, not that. But I just, I, I, I'm always going to feel good when a president of a country, of a dynasty, Brazil is a dynasty, he's a heavyweight, you know, Brazil. And this man talk about jiu-jitsu, talk about fighting, and he just make me all the time smile. And, uh, and I, 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 know a lot, I know a lot of my friends love him, you know. I'm not into politics too much, but uh, I want to acknowledge him too. Very nice. Thanks a lot for the interview, Ali. It was a pleasure to finally meet you, man. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to meet you, and I want to, you know, I want to, Say thank you to every fighter in Brazil, every manager, every promoter who's tried to grow the sport. You know, we're all brothers in this. You know, uh, we're all brothers, managers, coaches, trainers, fighters. And I think we all should support each other, stay positive, and um, nothing negative. When we stay positive, you know, everything move forward, and Brazil is on the rise again. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Awesome. awesome. Bye.